fuck out of bed, bitch. Go. You're finished. Ah, get up. What's up, everybody? I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for joining me in another episode of the FMA Dumpster Fire podcast. I just thought I'd leave this stuff <clears throat> up here. Check out some FMA, other FMA companies here in case you're looking for equipment. Today, man, yo, I'm going to be breaking down, breaking down some amazing sparring moments that happened at the Pekiti Tertia Tactical Association USA Conference number seven, but we're going to take on a little bit of a different twist. We're not going to focus so much on the, the technique or the technical, <clears throat> but we're going to focus in on the tactical considerations used to support the successful execution of, uh, of these techniques. I think it's going to be really neat. I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, I want to make an announcement. This is going to be an entire series. Uh, so far, there have been 10 episodes created. They're very, very short episodes. They will be available uh, at the Kitty Tertia Tactical Association YouTube channel, <clears throat> which is uh, shaping up to be a super dope channel. So make sure you're subscribed to that. If you love the Filipino martial arts, make sure you're subscribed to FMA Source. Without further ado, let's get right into it. What do you guys say? Um, what should we open? Let's open with Mandala, Jason Jones, and Kai Javier um, using polymer ginnung things. This is a really good one to start things off. Uh, so I'm going to remove all of these elements. I'm going to get rid of me. I'm going to add this to the screen right now. So enjoy. This is Mandala, Jason Jones, and Kai Javier. That title's so dope, yo. Hope you guys like it. We'll discuss that quote in a second. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Nice cut. That's it, man. Short and sweet. It gets right to the point. Um, so I wanted to discuss real quick before we move on to the next uh, tactical moment here. <clears throat> Uh, and I wanted to discuss this quote by Tuhan Jared. It's actually an extended quote. Uh, the PTTA uh, spars to develop combat attributes. He goes on to say that uh, we should be mindful of some of the training scars that can potentially be developed by sparring with, you know, head protection and uh, hand protection, all that stuff, right? Things like, uh, I know a lot of you guys grapple, so, you know, going in for a shot, sacrificing a headshot um, on an entry, you know, that, that's a training scar when you're, when you're dealing with blades, right? Um, so anyway, let's, uh, let's go over this one again real quick. I thought this one was so good. By the way, Jason Jones and Kai, super, super entertaining. <laughs> they both like to yap when they're fighting, which is... <laughs> A great tactic, by the way. There's a video coming up where uh, Mandela Jason Jones actually uses talking to his opponent to lull them 
into a sense of comfort before exploding into another attack. But let's uh, let's move on. I just want to see this one more time. Whoop! There it is. That downward cut draws Kai's upward defense, and there goes Mandala Jason. Shabam! Uh, in the next video, though, where Kai gets him with a beautiful sidestep and lateral cut, I want you to notice that he switched. Kai likes to switch weapons. He did it on me several times. One in in like mid air. It's still so jarring for me. But if you notice on the first engagement here, um, Kai has his blade on his right hand, and on the second engagement, he switches it up to his left. Boom. That is a beautiful, beautiful sidestep to a lateral cut to intercept Mandala Jason's 45 degree cut going to the outside. Just absolutely gorgeous. All right, let's move on to the next one. Um, let's go to me since I know you guys are here to watch me. I think. Anyway. By the way, you want some dope shirts, check out angle5.com. There's some dope Filipino gear over here. Uh, if you're looking for equipment, check out, look at, look up uh, Pintados, Pinal brand, sticks. They'll go up to smoking sticks. Of course, combat instruments and Kalahi gear. Uh, also check out shop.teampikiti.com. There's some knives there. Spreading the love, you guys. Spreading the love here at the FMA Dumpster Fire. <clears throat> All right. You guys want to watch uh, another one? Let's watch another one. Kai is a natural lefty. Oh, so he's actually switching to his right. What a crafty guy. Mm. Speaking of which, go on Instagram right now because finally we have Blackbird Training Group on Instagram. And they're already showing some really dope stuff. So Blackbird Training group on Instagram. I can wait. No, I can't. Let's go watch the next. Let's go watch the next one. This one is of myself and Garland. This is a rematch from last year. What up, Kai? You just missed it, man. You just missed it. We were just talking about you. But uh, just rewind. All right, let's watch uh, a moment between myself and uh, Garland. <clears throat> Here it is. <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, I got fooled so bad. Oh, no. No, oh, that was painful. I deserved it. <laughs> Here's another one. I was trying to be all far wallsy. Miss Red. Caught me. Good one, Garland. Good one, buddy. Super down with trapping that weapon, man. Really down with that. All right, all right, okay, enough of that, enough of that. Yeah, so <laughs> these videos are short and sweet. Uh, do I want to see that one again? Uh, yeah, so when, whenever I spar you guys, uh, I try to, um, I try to have goals. Try to have some uh, intentions, you know. I, I try to do some stuff, and uh, I, I pay. <laughs> I pay. I pay big time. I get smacked and I get caught, uh, and it can be embarrassing sometimes. But that's just sparring, you know. Nobody goes unscathed with these things. Um, I get ja I get bikini jab a lot in the face because I like to hang my face in there because I think I'm cool. <laughs> Whenever I try to get out of the way. But uh, I just want to review that uh, that first trap that I set here. And I'm not sure. How did I initiate that? Lateral swing to get him to move. And trap. Boom. And immediately followed by that thrust. I think the cool thing that I did here um, is that on my retreat, I kept my weapon um, aimed at my opponent. I think uh, I think it's kind of important. 
right anyway that's that <clears throat> we're going to move on to the next one but first what's up msmb national just wanted to shout out volpes for one of the ganunting trainers ganunting trainers jason and i were using during a series of matches during this event awesome product weight and balance on point volpes training i think i might have a banner with volpes training uh let me see no it's gone but volpes training v u l p e s is definitely a premier um polymer filipino martial arts and other bladed arts um training knife maker so you gotta you gotta check that out yeah i was doing some four walls man um i uh yeah yeah i i want but i can't get the downward four walls to work i i get confused whether to just keep my stick lateral and press or if i'm if i'm going to that boop, boop. anyway for all you four walls people you know what's up saw your hanging guard using there too yeah i use the hang again this is an entire series guys make sure to subscribe to the bikini tertia tactical association youtube channel they're just under 1,000 subscribers so let's get them over that hump and of course ernie lake maybe we're gonna go to an ernie lake video right now Mr. FCS PTTA in a Santo lifelong martial artist guy who hits really hard. Okay, so we're gonna go to an Ernie Lake clip now. This will be our third one. Uh, like I said, I have six for us to review today. Thank you for sticking around. Make sure to hit that like button. Share it with your buddies. I'll not. I'll try not to talk too much in between. Okay, but the next one we got is uh, Ernie Lake. Here it is, Shabam. Boom, gorgeous. Gorgeous. Should I be talking through these? I, I don't think it's necessary. But I, I'll talk through it. So, I mean, I mean, what are we talking about there, right? We're talking about like an angle two or a backhand strike. Big deal. But really, what we really want to talk about, what the heck, there, no, no, this. Yeah. <laughs> what we really want to talk about are the supporting tactics that allow for the successful execution of these really simple techniques, actually. Like, that's the second thing you learn in Filipino martial arts, right? Uh, but the supporting tactics is everything. And one thing to note about these, these tactical considerations is to not rely on them to work again, right? It'll work once, maybe it'll work twice, um, but you shouldn't really be super dependent on these tactics over time. And it really depends on the energy of the match and how you're feeling that day, your emotional state, your physical state, and it, it, it matters what your opponent is going to bring to the table. Bye, guys. All right, my, my son's getting his pants for school because he's about to start high school. Um, yeah, let's see. Um, that is a good example of timing the circular hand motion to find a hole in it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What's up, James? Member of the Boudoir crew. All right, we are we're gonna go back. <clears throat> we're gonna study the simplicity of the tactic employed here by Lakan Guru. Ernie Lake to execute again. What the heck? Like the simplest of techniques, right? It's it's arguably you no one needs to teach you an angle one and an angle two if you're a human being and you've picked up a stick. But really, we're just talking about that. It's just a uh, smackety smack. Um, by the way, his uh, opponent here, um, this guy's a beast also. And uh, yeah, I think people already understand that when we show these moments, it isn't like to show off how awesome an individual or a person is. We're really digging into the tactics, into the techniques, into the things that happen in sparring. We are completely eliminating ego from it, even though I myself know when I show videos of me getting smacked, you know, 
it's it's still kind of like, oh, I got smacked, but we're not about that. All right, so I really love this video. I really love um, the simple tactic of baiting the low line and then holding that position. I did, right, you're sort of waiting. It's a chess match now. You're gonna wait for what this next guy does, what your opponent does. And you can see right now, now is not the time. Can you guys see my mouse? I hope you guys can see my mouse. But I'm pointing at uh, his opponent's guard. And if he lands that, or if he tries, if he attempts to throw it now, meh, it's going to get blocked. But he waits for that opening. There it is to take it. Off he goes, 45 degrees, out of there. It doesn't even leave room for any sort of a countermeasure. Oh man, okay, yo, the next one is uh, probably my favorite one out of the bunch because it's something that I suck at. This is uh, this is Lamont Glass, Mandala Lamont on just a uh, absolutely beautiful double stick moment. One of the hardest things in Filipino martial arts, but it is the holy grail of sparring is if you can take your opponent's flank. If you can get behind them, that is like, Christmas, Easter, and your birthday all rolled up into one. It's very difficult to do. It's very easy to do in demonstrations. But when that opponent is constantly pivoting and readjusting his alignment to, to take your center, it's very, very difficult. And again, this one comes out of the uh, Blackbird Training Group camp. This is Mandala Lamont Glass, Mandala under the PTTA. Man, let's watch this. Oh. Jeez, man, that was just beautiful. We're going to watch that again. We're going to talk. It's just beautiful, you guys. What the hell? Why can't I do this stuff? Um, but the key here, I think, is that uh, is how quickly he lands on this foot right here, and he spring loads it, ready to go again. Um, obviously, occupying, boom. He elicits a double stick defense. I don't know um, the name for it. Crusada, maybe. I know. I only know Crusada from. <clears throat> I don't even know if that's a PPD tertia term. But that leaping, um, I guess, angle to attack elicits a double stick defense, which opens up that, that one. This guy seeks opening to land a downward thrust. He lands it. But this is the important part. Shabam. Watch this foot when it lands from the jump. Boom, immediately loads up again to facilitate a pivot and bling, boom. Just absolutely beautiful. By the way, this was a nicely controlled strike here, guys. That could have been, that's behind the head. Um, so it may seem like nothing, but when you're engaged in stick fighting, it's one of the most primal activities that you could be doing with your life. I mean, I've been hitting my friends with sticks ever since I was six years old. It's, it's really primal. And to, to be able to control it like that, that's some high-level shit. Okay. All right. We're moving on. We got two more. We got two more. What's this next one then? I think this is not the Mandala Rob one. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. This is in Jolie. Agalon and Jolie against Ranger Man Carry and Sabo Sabo Watch. Man, I love that one. I'm gonna have to pause it before we watch the next one. The reason I love this one is that Agalon and Jolie is constantly, constantly 
um, in the pursuit of corrupting his opponent's perception of his true range and his intention. This guy is constantly moving between big, fluid, almost casual motions, and then he'll change up the intensity on you. He will change the cadence, the speed, and the intensity, and tighten up his movements. So he's going for like really big, broad, you know, almost hypnotic motions into like this abbreviated, condensed, and super intense moment where he catches opponents off guard. Um, I have other examples, like I said. Make sure you're subscribed to the um, Kikiti Church Tax Pro Association YouTube channel because this is where the, the full series is going to be released. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I really love Anjoli's body angling. If we just cut that off, it just says, I really love Anjoli's body. Um, <laughs> I really love Anjoli's body angling and ranging. Absolutely, James. Me too, man. All right, so let's watch the rest of this video. But again, just a, it's like a friggin' anaconda hunting, man. Just beautiful. There's one more. Beautiful. Baiting, fainting, finding his range, looking for his opponent to overcommit. That's it, boom. It was that moment where he fainted the uh, the Pikiti jab, the broken uh, number two strike, boom. That finally elicited that overcommitment from his opponent. Let's look at it. There it is. Quick debate. He's paying for that. Every bit of his body is ready to capitalize. And he was seeking that, it seems like the whole entire time. There's the overcommitment. And look, his shoulder, his front, uh, his, his rear foot loaded, everything loaded. Bang. Gorgeous. Gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. Oh, man. Uh, yeah. It's, there is a really high level game that happens. And I think when people watch sparring footage, um, a lot can be missed. Like, I love just watching Agalon and Jolie and, for example, Mandela Jason Jones from Mandela Lamont class just dance around each other, just trying to find these, like, moments of tactical advantage, right, taking each other's centers, going to the outside, cutting to the inside, even when they don't strike, even when nothing happens, even if they miss by inches. I just find that dance just incredibly beautiful. I've never, I've never uh, with any art had this heightened level of appreciation than I do with Filipino martial arts stick fighting. It's just absolutely gorgeous stuff. I can watch this stuff for hours. All right, so uh, we're going on to, uh, oh man, this is it. This is the last one. We have uh, Mandela Rob Pagan. <clears throat> Let's see. You know what? Let's let's watch the full thing. Actually, no, no. Let's watch it from where I had it initially. Yeah, this is beautiful. What the heck was that? That looked simple, right? Like nothing. I was like nothing. Here it is. So cash. But that is a good triangle forward, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see that again. And boop, 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 boop. So he initiates the attack to anticipate the counter. There's the counter. And there's the recounter. Gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous. No, let's watch his full video because there was one in here where uh, this guy, Jonathan Nichols, actually uh, tagged Mandela Rob in a. 
in, in another brilliant tactic, I think. But this was another good one. Rob got him. He's coming for us. Got him ready. He's doing the work. Got him. All right, it's this next one. It's this, <laughs> I love this one. I don't know if dude meant to do this, but I love employing tactic that Jonathan Nichols is about to employ. And it's just pure chill, man. Check it out. That's it. And it's this. It is this. It is exactly this. His relaxed posture. He just walks right up. Really, really casual. Not uh, showing any intentions other than the load position, obviously, and the fact that they're still fighting. But just super chill. Whoop. That's it. You know what I mean? You got to see this in, in full motion, too, because <laughs> the dude is like, doo -doo -doo, beep. great move, great move. You know what? Let's just watch it again, man. Let's watch it again. This is great. That is triangle footwork to initiate the attack, to elicit a predictable counter, right? There's the counter. Rob's already on his way back here. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, so that's the series. I hope you guys like it. It's a it's a short series. Um, each video is about a minute long or just a little bit over, and there's usually one or two um, examples of these tactical considerations used to facilitate um, these techniques. Oh, man. You know what I didn't use? I didn't use this stuff. I just, I prepared all this stuff a while ago. I, oh man, oh, I totally forgot. Okay, hold on, hold on. Let me set this up. Let, let, let me, um, let me do the Lamont one. Let me do the Lamont video. Set this up. Let's see if this works. Oh. I'm trying to make this podcast more entertaining for you guys. You know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, I, I... This is exactly what I've been waiting for. This is exactly... I don't mean to sound like Cat Williams, but this is exactly what I've been waiting for. All right. Okay, so, yo, thank you guys very much for watching FMA Source. Um, let's show more Filipino martial artists some love. Uh, there we go. We got all these guys. Wait, oh man, it's all reversed. Okay, if you guys have, you know, I should. Oh, you know what this was? This was for, um, this was for the episode that I did when, um, I think it was for like rattan sticks, like where to get rattan sticks and training stuff. I need to update that. Hey, if there's anybody that you want to uh, plug. Leave it in the comments. I'm going to make another one of these things. Uh, I just want to help promote Filipino martial arts businesses. Um, Volpe's, even though it's not strictly Filipino martial arts, he caters to all the bladed arts. Uh, I want to support as many of them as possible through this podcast. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Let me just uh, um, get to some comments. Uh, Rob has great PTK aesthetics and shows it. Yeah, oh, hey. Let me talk about Rob. Let me talk about my homeboy, Rob Pagan, uh, which uh, he's right here, actually. So um, he kind of shattered my world a little bit because uh, when I saw him spar at the Pekiti Tertia Tactical Association USA Conference 7, dude held his own, man. And he was demonstrating some high-level 
Hikiti Tersha, which, you know, maybe isn't that hard to do, but it's incredibly hard to do under pressure. Um, so, yeah, I saw Mandela Rapagan spar, and I was like, yo, what the heck? That was really good. It's really good, actually. But here's what's mind blowing to me. Uh, and Rob, I hope this is cool. I, I think I think we're cool. We discussed this. I'm allowed to to make this public. But Mandala Rob Pagan does not spar like this. He doesn't spar with a fencing mask and with hockey gloves. He just does a lot of like Pekuti Tersha deep dives and um, you know air drills and distance sparring, which it, I figured. If that's all you ever did, uh, you're going to poop the bed when you actually spar. Uh, I mean, that's been my observation for the most part. But Mandela Rob totally, like, blew that out of the water because he told me he has inspired, like, you know, full contact-ish since, like, the 90s, you know, in week half competitions. And then he gets thrown <laughs> into the shark tank at a, a PTTA grading uh, sparring session. And he did really good. Um, not only did he do really well, but for me, the pinnacle of sparring, high-level sparring, is when you can regulate um, your effort, your intention, your energy, uh, based upon the person that you're facing so that you both uh, cultivate a learning experience out of this match. There's, there is something to be said for like purely competition-based where you're just trying to smash each other's faces. I like that once in a while, rarely. Um, but these kinds of matches, you know, you're typically working on something that you want to be better at or you're facilitating the learning experience of your opponent. Hopefully that is symbiotic and you both get to learn something. Um, but I was just completely shocked at Mandala Rob Bagan's performances because uh, he did he did really good um, considering that he isn't like he doesn't actively spar full contact in the way um, that he was uh, essentially tested during that so it's kind of blowing my mind you guys uh, maybe he's an anomaly maybe he just deep dives into Rikiti a lot and has really strong visualization I mean the dude is a ranger, U.S. Army ranger, maybe that's got something to do with it, you know. But, again, really shocking to me that he did as well as he did, considering that he doesn't um, spar often. But anyway, that's just me sort of expressing uh, my mind just being blown. Because, <laughs> yeah, Erdy, yeah, you saw him, right? Like, you're not supposed to spar that well if you don't spar – um, at least semi regularly, so that was weird. That uh, that really blew my mind. That really blew my mind. And Kai, yes, it was a pleasure sparring with you, man. You uh, you 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 brought the fear in me, bro. After our first match, I was like, oh man, I wanna actually, I wanted to do that clinch sparring with you. Guess we'll have to wait till next time. Um, yeah, Lakaguru, Ernie Lake. Again, I saw him spar the previous year, but this year was different. I, this is a crazy thing about these uh, PTTA people, man. It's like every time I see them, no matter where the heck they are in their trajectory, it just seems like they're either bringing something new or just getting better, period. And that's, that's amazing. Um, does this change your opinion of distance sparring? You know what? It doesn't change my opinion of distance sparring. I've always believed distance sparring to be a healthy practice, to be a good practice, but not if it's the only thing you ever do, not if it constitutes the vast majority of your sparring is distance sparring. So I still think for the most amount of people, if all you do is distance spar, it's unlikely that you're going to produce the results that Mandala Rob was able to produce um, during the PTTA 7 uh, USA training conference. But I don't know. It, man, Ernie, it certainly has shook my foundation about what distance sparring, and I ain't too proud to be wrong about it. I just need to see more examples. So far, 
the the data for me is uh, I mean Rob is really the only anomaly that I've seen who just I don't know. It's just weird, man. Mandela Rapagada doesn't spar full contact with a helmet and gloves, and he held his own that against high-level people. I don't know. That's weird to me. But certainly it makes me take pause about my opinions of just distance spar. 100%. 100%. I'm not, I'm not uh, beyond admitting that uh, there, there could be something there developing where I could be just completely friggin' wrong. So I'm cool with that. Uh, Mandela Rob Kai brings his mana and his ohana. What's mana? It's not like food of the gods or like, or like bread from heaven, something like that. Something like that. Uh, and Jolie, Rob, Jason, Lamont, Ernie all did stuff that I aspire to. Man. Come on, James. You're you're good, man. You won that uh, you won that point fighting tournament here recently. Yeah, it'll be good. It'll be good. Anyway, what was, what was I saying about uh, Ernie? Uh, oh yeah, I was saying uh, I saw him the year before, and he was good, very crafty. But this year, dude was just like Hulk smashing people, just like really heavy strikes, man. Crazy, crazy. And then. Um, I fought uh, Mandela Lamont Glass. That was friggin' interesting. That was really good. Um, I'd like to share a little bit of my, I guess, goals, intentions uh, in, in some competition. Uh, what I want to do is to just occupy your brain and make you not fight your game and make you constantly be second guessing your entries and your attacks. So I could engage in matches where we barely strike. And I like that. I like that kind of game where I can give somebody a mental pause and make them second guess their strategies. So even if I'm not attacking, I'm doing all sorts of, you know, things, tactics um, that prevent somebody from getting in the zone. And that's, that's what I like. But again, um, Training that gets me whacked in the face a lot, right? Because a lot of these maneuvers are risky. They're in the pocket, um, a lot of baiting, a lot of fainting. So, yeah, I get uh, I get smacked in the face a lot. But I'm working on it. I'm not there yet. Um, I don't think any of us are there yet. Like I said, everyone that I saw at uh, the previous PTT event, I see them this year, and I'm like, y'all are different somehow. You know, and maybe that's just by virtue of the activity itself. You know, it's like golf where or shooting. Where you can have one day where you're just on top of the world. You can't miss. You're seeing strikes from a mile away. And then some days you're just a piece of crap. And it's like you can't hit the side of a barn. It happens. It happens. Absolutely. It happens. Kind of means power. All right. Power. Okay. Oh, I think I know that from video games. Uh, Rod is a fluid person. Rob, maybe you mean Rob. All right, guys. Interesting, as in we kill each other a lot. Yes. Man. I, yeah. Yeah, we had like at least me and Mandela Lamont, we had like within a span of a minute and a half, like three mutual decapitations and it was uh, for me it was beautiful um i think one of them i was early and the other two he was early but it's literally like bah -bah, right so uh, it was beautiful it was it was an honor to uh to screw up with you my daughter jason uh i can't wait to do it again ernie next year rob next year anyway guys i hope you guys enjoyed that um if you want to watch it again you guys can just replay this just do me a favor make sure to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so that you get notified whenever i go live again randomly um and do make sure to subscribe to the bikini church of tactical association youtube channel make sure to check out blackbird training group on instagram check out volpace 
Uh, if you want to get polymer trainers, what am I missing? What am I missing? Anyway, if you all want to plug, please do plug away if there are any Filipino martial arts uh, organizations, companies, uh, services, whether that's in the United States, North America, Europe, South America, uh, Asia, and especially in the Philippines, that you want to plug that you love, I'm down with those comments. I'm not going to see it as like spam or anything to say, hey, if you like blah, 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 check out blue, blue, blue. I'm going to leave it up there. Let's continue to grow, to grow the community. And uh, I hope you guys like this video, this ego-free, non-chest pounding uh, presentation of tactical considerations in order to successfully execute techniques. Hope you guys enjoy that. My name is Paulo, aka GN. Um, thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Peace. Get the fuck out of bed, bitch. Go. No. You're finished! Ah, get up, 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 Oh, fuck.